In this video, we're going to show you different ways that you can bring vector data into the software. We're also going to look at some of the common issues you may encounter when working with data that's been created in a third-party design system and how best to solve those issues. There are three ways that we can load vector data into the software. The first is just to open it as a new file. The second is to import it into a file that's already open or an existing job. And the third is to drag and drop the vector file into an already open part. Let's look at the first of these. We'll come over and start a new copy of the software. So here we have no file open. I'm going to come down and click on open an existing file and this will open the browser so I can look in the folders on my PC to find an appropriate vector file to load. So let's come down to the bottom right here and click on the down arrow and see the different file types that we can open. We have the standard software file types for the Vectric software, so we have .crv and also in Aspire you'd see a .crv3d. Then we have the vector formats, we have DXF and DWG, which are very common file formats that are used with CAD drawing programs, so maybe more typically for engineering style work. Then we have EPS and AI files, these are more common with artistic drawing packages. Lastly, we have PDF, which is a fairly common file format often used for documents. Now, a quick note on some of these. If you open a PDF file with multiple pages, then it will create a number of layers, one for each page of data. EPS and AI files do not retain layer information, and DXF and DWG do, as you'll see in a moment. Here what we're going to do is work with a DXF file, so I'm going to select that option there which would filter the files in the view here to only show ones that had a .dxf on the end. And from the project folder we're going to select the file imported vectors demo.dxf and hit the open button. When we open a file like this the job setup form will appear on the left here and the job size will be set to the extents of the vectors that were in the file that we've opened. So this has just been picked up from the edges of the vectors that you can see here in the drawing. Material Z will be referenced from the last file that you opened. But what the software will also do is try and position this in the coordinate system in the same position that it was saved at from the CAD system that it was drawn in. So here it's being done by this offset value. So if we look down the bottom at the crosshairs, that is the 0, 0 position. And the corner of our job is being offset by this amount so that the job itself matches up with the original location that the job was drawn in relative to the x0, y0 position. Now we can leave that as is or we can change it. In some cases we may just want to put the reference point of the job into the 0, 0 position in which case we can just uncheck this so that the software is no longer using the offset and now you can see that the lower left corner of the job coincides with the crosshairs so I know that is at x0, y0. Now if we change the size of the job at this point to add a little bit of space around our vectors it's going to do it relative to the datum position that we have selected here. So at the moment this is set to the lower left corner so if I increase the job size to 10 and 10 just pause to let that take effect you can see that the distance has been added on the top edge and the right hand edge because that's being added relative to this corner. If we change that to the middle and increase the size to 12 by 12 then now what's happening is it's adding an even amount round all size reference from the center point there in order to get up to the size that we've input here. At this point if I hit OK then X0, Y0 is going to be in the middle of my work area. It may be that I want to set that back to the lower left hand corner as you can see there so I can move this around before I change the values here to um, alter the way that material will be added around these vectors that we've opened. I'm going to leave my material um, Z setup and thickness as is. We're not going to get into machining, so that's effectively irrelevant for this tutorial. And let's just go ahead and hit OK. Now I'll just point out here, as I mentioned before, the DXF and DWG will retain the layer information from the sending system. So if we click on the down arrow for the layer manager, we can see the layers that we've got there in the list. Let's just close that. 
Now we've seen what happens when we open a file. We get that job size which matches the vectors and we have the opportunity then to adjust that in order to set up our work area. Now another way to open vectors is to already have a job open. So let's come up and click on new. I don't want to save this. I'm going to set my job to be 12 by 12 and I'm going to set the lower left corner to be 0 and hit OK. So now we have a work area already defined and the way that we can import vectors into this is to come on and click on the icon here import vectors from a file. I'm going to select the same file and hit open and what the software will do is just automatically open the vectors from the file in position within the job. So if you remember before there was an offset from zero for where the corner of this part was and so that is why the position of the vectors is the way that they are after we've imported them here because it's respecting the location that they were drawn in from the sending system. You'll notice again that we've picked up the layer information from the file that we've imported but this time it's in addition to layer 1 because when we created a new file we would have automatically had layer 1 created for us. Now it's worth noting at this stage that if you import a file that doesn't have layer information in it like an EPS or an AI file then it will just put all that information onto a single layer in the software that has the same name as the file you've imported. Now the fact that the vectors are positioned in the same location that they were drawn in can sometimes catch you out. If we come up and import another file into our part, so import vectors from a file and select imported vectors demo 2 and hit open, then we don't appear to have done anything. And the reason for that is that the part that we've imported was not drawn in the space that we can currently see in our 2D view. The best way to see this straight away is to come up and click on the icon here, zoom to fit, and when we click on that the software will zoom out so that all the vectors in our job will fit within the 2D view that you can see here. And now we can see why we couldn't see these vectors is because they're way off in space. So first thing to do whenever you import vectors and don't see anything in the 2D view is to come over and click on the icon here to zoom to fit and that'll make sure that you go out to a zoom level where they'll become visible. Now notice that when we import vectors that they're automatically selected. That's why we have this dashed purple line here. Because of that, even when they're not in the view, the other thing I could do to put these into my job when I first import them if I can't see them is just to hit F9 on the keyboard and that will take the selected vectors and centre them in the middle of my job area. So you can see that's moved those down into the centre there. If we now zoom to fit it'll zoom in on those and if I wanted I could click on them again to go into the transform mode, click and just drag those up and out the way here. The last method we have to import vector data is to drag and drop it. And this can be quite nice if you're working with clip art pieces that you want to place in a particular position on your part rather than something where you want to retain its original drawn position. If I just zoom out a little here and we uh, pop up a window of Windows Explorer. So here I can see I've navigated to a location where I've got those files that we were importing before. I could also do this from the desktop as well. Now I can select one of these. So we'll select the sort of flag shape with Snow White text in it, click and drag. And wherever I let go is where the position of that is going to be in the drawing. So click and drag up here and let go and that's where it's going to appear. So that's another way that we can bring vector data in here is just to drag and drop it from the file window itself. Let's just close that down now. What I'm going to do is just undo those last two imports there. So we go back to the data we've got here. A shortcut key for zoom to fit. So instead of using the icon here is just hit the F key on the keyboard and that'll do the same job of zooming the data that I've got in the part to fit within the 2D window. Now if we take a look at our layer manager here, drop this down, we can see that we've got a variety of layers here and these have been named to represent the colour that they were originally drawn in. The layers could be anything at all, there's no direct correlation between the name and the colour. One thing though to notice here is this layer 
and if we just switch that off with the snow white text on was originally drawn on a layer called white that was actually drawn in the design program that it was created in using white as the color now it is possible to set something to be white in the software but when we import it we automatically convert any white vectors to black and that's because if they were in the white area here we wouldn't be able to see them if I just use the color drop down and change that to white you can see what happens is anything within the white space here we wouldn't see had we imported this and retained the white color so just worth knowing that if you've drawn this in white in the design program perhaps if it works with a black background then when we import it into the Vectrix software it'll automatically be converted to black let's just switch that so that it becomes black again and we can see it something else to note with the layers and if we come click on the layers tab and look at it here we can see that we've got two empty layers we've got layer one which was created when we first made a new part that has nothing on it we can tell that because it has a blank sheet of paper icon next to it and when we imported the DXF it had an empty layer zero on it and that's quite common with DXF and DWG files now we can see the layers that have something on because they have these piece of paper icons with the kind of rectangle and circle overlapping in them there and if we switch any of those on and off we can see the data that's on those particular layers now sometimes you may have quite a few empty layers and a nice way to get rid of those is to just merge them into a single layer and then delete that and the way we do that is to make all the empty layers visible so that means we switch off the visibility of the layers that have something on them by clicking on the light bulbs there now I can just click the um, icon at the end here to get to the tools in the layer manager can choose the option to merge visible and that will merge all the visible layers so all the layers with the light bulb switched on into a single layer that now I can easily just go and delete there in this case we only had a couple of layers to get rid of but you can imagine that that would be a great time saver if you had a lot of empty layers that you wanted to delete now one other thing to note on the layers here not directly related to importing vectors is the fact that one of the layer names has turned red that happens when the active layer is switched off so that's the active layer I can see that because the icon here is bold but it's not currently visible and typically when you're creating objects or you're making edits then you want to make sure your active layer is switched on because that is the layer that new objects will be created on so just something to be aware of let's go ahead and switch on our layers here and now what I want to do is show you a few more of the things that you may encounter with imported vectors that it's useful to be aware of and know how to deal with if I come over and select the circles here from the drawing just holding the shift key down to pick those you can see that these two look different to the one I selected here these look like a pretty standard selected vector with the dashed purple line this one appears to still be solid although I can sort of see hints of the dashed line there and the reason for this is we've actually got two vectors laying over the top of each other that are exactly the same or another way of putting it we have duplicate vectors this is quite common in um, files that have been created in CAD systems because you may easily accidentally repeat shapes when drawing it and they will all be exported when you bring them into um, the Vectric software now this would present problems potentially when we selected these if we tried to machine them one thing that's tricky is if I box select that you can see that it just appears to be a single selected vector so how do we find these without individually clicking on the vectors well we have a nice tool where we can come up and say edit and we can say select all duplicate vectors so if we click on that there you can see that it's selected one of those duplicate vectors for me now I have the option to just hit delete on the keyboard in order to get rid of it or I can right mouse click say move to layer new layer and I could call this layer anything I want but here we'll call it duplicate I'm going to make it invisible and inactive and hit OK and if we just switch off the other layers for a moment and take a look at that I can see that actually there wasn't just one duplicate vector of the circle but it also found these two rectangles here which must have been duplicates on the data that we imported in that area that's on the red layer 
So quite a handy tool, as I say, I can either delete those or the safer option is just to move them onto another layer in case potentially having that duplicate copy is important later. So let's switch that off and go back to our original three layers here and switch those on again. Something else that's quite common is to have shapes that appear to be closed but are actually separate lines. We come over and click what we think is a rectangle here. When I click on one side of it, it only selects that side and what that's doing is showing me that that's made up of four separate lines. Now again, it's very easy for me to box select that not realise that they're four separate lines and go ahead and toolpath it but typically you're going to straight away see problems with the toolpath it creates either with the toolpath on the wrong side of the lines or gaps in the toolpath when we use the preview. Again we do have the option to try and join these things together and in fact the software will actually try to join shapes that it finds like this where it's got coincident endpoints but what it also looks for is the fact that they are um, next to each other in the list of objects that are being imported as well. So if it satisfies both those conditions the software will try and join shapes together because this is a fairly common problem. In this case we've deliberately engineered it so it hasn't managed to do that so we have four separate shapes. If we find a situation like this where we've got something that we'd like to be closed but it isn't, the way to do that is to select the vectors that are involved, come over to the drawing tab and click on the icon here to join open vectors and the J key on the keyboard is a shortcut to get to that function as well. That'll look at those vectors, it'll tell me how many I've got at the moment that are closed and open, then I can specify a tolerance and any endpoints that it finds within this tolerance it will try and join together and this is showing me that with that current tolerance what I'll end up with afterwards is one closed shape and zero open which is what I'm looking for. So if I click the join button and close and now I can click on that and I can see that is selected. Now notice that that's changed colour and that's because I've got the default layer selected as my active layer at the moment. So if I needed that to still be on the same layer as the original data, what I'd want to do is select it, right mouse click and move that back onto its layer that it was on. I could have also changed the active layer as well before I went ahead and joined those vectors to create the new closed vector. Now the last thing I want to look at is another fairly common situation particularly with DXF and DWG files. If we come up and select this shape here with these nice smooth looking curves in and I hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing mode I can see that they're not actually smooth curves but instead it's made up of lots and lots of straight polylines. Now I could probably go on and machine this and it may look okay but if I wanted to edit this or make sure that I was working with smooth curves then I'd be better off to actually um, fit curves to this shape. The way that we do that is have the vector selected as we have here I'm just going to hit escape on the keyboard to go out of node editing mode and then select the vector there. Now we're going to come over and click on the icon here, fit curves to selected vector. It'll show me the nodes that I currently have. I'm going to specify Bezier curves because they're going to be the easiest type of entity to edit and I'm going to put in a tolerance of 0.005. That means that it will allow the shape it creates to vary from the original lines by this distance. So if the data you've got needs to have complete accuracy maintained you probably don't want to fit curves to vectors unless you can use a tolerance that's within the required accuracy. I'm going to choose the option to keep sharp corners and I'm going to also make sure I've got replace selected vectors checked and now when I hit preview I can see how many nodes I'm going to be left with and that's going to give me a much better looking shape. If I hit OK and we go back into node editing mode you can see it would be much easier for me to work with and edit this shape now than it would have been when I had all the little polylines representing it. So there we've taken a look at a few of the different ways that you can import vectors into the Vectric software and also some of the common issues that you may encounter when working with imported data from another design system. And that concludes this particular tutorial. Thanks for watching.